I don't give a fuck, bitch. Welcome back to Rixty Minutes. I'm Digibro, and with me is the best guy ever. <laughs> you sound like that uh, that thing Gib made. You know what I'm fucking talking about? Yeah, I'm the best guy ever, guys. What's up? What's going on? <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. We watched the new Rick and Morty. <laughs> that wasn't enough of a description. Yeah, okay. <laughs> new Rick and Morty. It's uh, episode four, season three, about um, the, what the fuck were they, Vindicators. It's called uh, Vindicators 3, The Return of World Ender was yeah. the episode. So uh, this episode, I was not that into. Yeah, I I'm, I'm totally with you. I thought this was pretty weak. First of all, I was very confused because the whole early part of the episode, they keep insisting that this is like, um, the, like the, the return of the Vindicators. Yeah, who have yeah. never been characters on the show. Now I was like unsure because I haven't rewatched season two, and I was like, did I just like blank out on an episode with these guys? Like I was thinking that the whole time too. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I had I fucking wanted to like pause the episode and go look it up, but like as it went on, I was just like, oh, I don't remember any of this. So this couldn't have been. This could not have happened before. You know. Yep. Yep, that was confusing. Uh, yeah, because I mean, I knew I liked a bunch of these characters. A million ants is like the coolest guy ever, and I was just like, I would remember million ants. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, this this obviously is a thing they're doing. This isn't we haven't seen this before. So I don't know if this is if these guys are meant to be a parody of the Guardians of the Galaxy or yeah. Like, I mean, that's or obviously like the, the name is. Or- not the Expendables, the fucking Suicide Squad. That's what I was thinking of. But mm. they're more Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the idea is that they're a parody of Guardians of the Galaxy, but they don't. They're not like a mm-hmm. on the nose parody. They're none of them are anything like the Guardians of the Galaxy. Is what I'm getting. Well, at. Well, except for like the main guy. Oh, okay. I, I have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy, but I got the feeling that the oh, main really? dude was supposed to be like a uh, Star Killer or whatever Star his name Lord. is. He just seems like the How main guy. How have you not which... seen the Guardians movies? I, I don't believe that they're that good. How can any movie be good? I don't they, believe they it. They are it fantastic be true. movies. I would give right, each of them a so. 9 out of 10. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, I cried in Guardians 2. I, I saw it twice and cried both times in the same like week. Like a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I believe you. Uh, well, why do, I don't need to say that anymore because I just watched The Vindicators 3, Return of, Return of World. <laughs> well, that's, that's and it was everything thing. I could hope for. I, I don't know what this episode's like going for, honestly. Like, uh, the... it wasn't going for anything. It, it was just trying to be like, oh, look how silly Rick's being. It was a look Rick's being silly episode with a little bit of like the relationship drama that we've seen like a thousand times already. Yeah. It really had nothing new this to offer. This was very in Rick and Morty du jour. Like, this is yeah. the most, like, it's a lot like Anatomy Park or mm-hmm. like M. Night Shyamalan's. But I feel like um, this is the first episode where I've become concerned about there not being B plots in this show. Yeah. Because, like, yeah. the worst Rick and Morty adventures have always been matched up with at least semi decent B plots. Like, in Anatomy Park, for instance, everybody criticizes that episode because it's just, like, a straight up Jurassic Park parody. Mm-hmm. But the funniest mm-hmm. part about that episode is um, the uh, Jerry's parents fucking some, like, having a weird, like, threesome relationship with a younger black guy. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's by far the funniest thing about the episode. So this one, we're just kind of trapped in this very one-note, repetitive uh, adventure story that, I don't know, I had no interest in the whole time. I, I hate to say it, but, I mean, this episode gives me the feeling that we've kind of hit the wall. I, okay, like, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but, like, this gives the impression to me that, like, okay, we've kind of had Rick and Morty run its course now, and we got it, like, we understand what it's been doing, and it yeah. has now accomplished it. So, like, what... Like, this was just, like, Rick being a little bit of Rick, Morty being a little bit of Morty in ways that we see every single episode right. with, like... Like, this was very much like a Flash episode. Like, I felt like the animation was, like, a little bit next level on this episode. Like, everything that the ghost train thing was cool. A million ants, when he did, like, his action things were pretty sick. I don't know. Like, this episode felt very attractive looking, but then just lacked, like, a script. Like, I yeah. I laughed a couple times, but this this did not feel I I don't think as, I like, laughed. biting as I was expecting. I don't think I laughed the entire episode. You know, like I got a couple chuckles. Uh, the first time that Noop Noop like like backs up Rick, yeah. I, like I don't know, that got a laugh out of me. I, I, the the whole like 
like what you said about the animation, I mm-hmm. I think this show is always about on par with animation, but what was not as strong in this is like the directing. Because in Pickle Rick, a lot of my laughs were just at like violent moments. It was just at like the yeah. timing of a scene of like Rick just suddenly like fucking carving somebody in half. This episode mm-hmm. has one incredibly <laughs> violent scene that just felt like, uh, to me, you know? Like when the when the first guy dies... And yeah, it's just like yeah. this way over the top violent scene, and I was just kind of like, what, "What was was that necessary? Like, why? Why are we going for that level? Like, it it just wasn't funny, you know? It was it just wasn't really funny. violent, and I was like, okay." fun i guess you know see we're still like i've seen the hyper violence from every other episode of the last season and a half so it's not like impressing me uh at this point i felt like i almost felt like when that guy died specifically it kind of felt like they cut his arc off too soon like i didn't yeah i don't know like they really threw all these characters to the fucking wayside which in a way i kind of respect that they're like yeah we don't give a fuck about our characters that we came up with they will just kill them off instantly like that's kind of cool but on the other hand, it feels wasteful in sort of a they didn't almost a disrespectful way to their own characters. Yeah. I don't know. I'm exaggerating a little. Uh, no, bit. No, disrespectful is a word I I would use for for that guy in particular mm-hmm. because we didn't like wh- what about that dude warranted yeah. such an like extreme death? Like it wasn't cathartic. We didn't hate this guy That's right. yet. He just seemed like I don't know, kind of a milk toast, douchey guy. I get like he yeah. We didn't like they. They kind of hinted at like a maybe a pedophilia thing, but they didn't deliver right, on that. That's the thing. They kind of hinted <laughs> at this other thing. Like they hint at a bunch of little things, but then basically he just becomes like a, a horror character and mm-hmm. gets himself killed. And like there, it seemed like they were going for a horror thing with this, but the episode doesn't. It's not a horror episode. Like mm-hmm. at first, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, okay, they're gonna do a saw thing. It's gonna be scary. It's gonna be about like these guys getting killed and horrible death traps, but. Um, I don't know. After the first one, it's like you see it coming, and yeah, there's they really do not build up like the tension in that way, and no. like the characters really have no difficulty solving the problem. Like they, they it really is just a window dressing for like these characters turning on each other, which right. is you know what Rick planned all along. But yeah, like I don't care about these characters. Like no. we, we don't know them, so where's my investment in them getting dismembered? It's like that Morty kind of respects them, but of course, meanwhile we're finding out that they're bad people, which right. I guess proves Rick's point. But uh, yeah, it felt like cheap. But it's and- a point that's been proven. Like this is just stuff that we've seen before. Yeah. I mean, even Morty is like, you know, Rick, you've made this point before. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like the show is almost self-aware about the fact that this is a repetitive episode, but it doesn't do anything to change that. You know? Yeah. Um, I agree completely. We've got the undercurrent of, like, maybe Rick somewhat cares about Morty, but then, like... And that's kind of flipped that's on its That's never head. been done before. What an amazing yeah. plot for an episode. And, I mean, it's Jesus. kind of funny when they flip it on its head and it reveals that it's Noop Noop that he cares about, yeah. not Morty. But, like, you know, the scene before that already proved that maybe Rick cares about Morty because that was Rick's theory, you know? Mm-hmm. Was, that, uh, was that he cared about Morty and that's why he did this. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, it's it's been done in better ways, in better episodes. Um, th- what the hell was with logic showing up at the end I, of the episode? I was so... I fucking... Ro- I don't I didn't... R- roll my eyes is not an accurate description of what I did. I was just... I just, like, uh, breathed out a little bit of my soul. I mean, I guess it was fine. It's like... Is, is, is celebrity cameos what Rick and Morty needs? Like, the Joel McHale thing already crippled that episode and was just a massive source of I mean that wasn't even a that wasn't like a this show has had tons and tons of celebrity voice actors in it like almost every episode has had somebody like that you know Stephen Colbert has been on the show fucking well never uh, have I ever been annoyed by it except for that one time with Joel McHale and now this is happening too like it's I mean with logic logic, though yeah it's just logic to the episode and like I don't think it was funny. It's just logic. It wasn't funny at all. You Even know? his song, like I listened to that twice to like try to get the humor out of it. Was really like he just makes some vague references I to think, like, oh, he's okay. singing about Noop Noop or something. The thing about the what song that is that the end of mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy two has like a big ending song where it's just like describing the Guardians of the Galaxy. So I think this was okay. a straight parody of that. But again, the episode mm. is so like lacking as a parody of Guardians of the Galaxy. Like it has nothing to do with it. So bringing that in at the end, like suddenly an on the nose parody after a whole episode of nothing even resembling Guardians of the Galaxy is really odd. 
it kind um, of is like the the Fury Road parody that just didn't really do anything with it. It just was the setting for and yeah. that and then like within that episode they do things like have that king at the end that has nothing to do with Fury Road and is like a totally right. separate thing. Yeah, like they're really not getting the yeah, like it wastefulness. Like they're 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 t- using this this setting and then not really utilizing what it provides. They're just doing something else or yeah. it's it's just like an atmospheric thing that doesn't actually add anything to the narrative they're going for in any interesting or meaningful way. Yeah. I don't I d- I didn't get what they were going for with the characters, with the vindicators. Like I didn't understand is the joke just that they're all kind cuz first of all yeah. they didn't they never came across as like these like paragons of justice kind of guys like the mm-hmm. main dude is like a, yeah i drink and blah 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 and like i don't know they they're all kind of assholes from the beginning to rick you know they're very like they're just kind of snobby, you know? I think we're just supposed to take Morty's... I think what they were going for is that we would just, like, accept what Morty says, at least for the start. And uh, But, I mean, yeah, like, it's obvious. Whatever Rick says is going to happen is going to happen. So, yeah. I don't know. did not really uh, have an effective arc in that way. No. There was no, like, reveal. There was no, like, oh, this is taking apart the trope. It's just, like, no. It's just an episode about Rick being an uh, asshole to be, and to be fair, killing a bunch twist, of people. The, the the one thing that was good about it was the twist. I mean, okay, there were some things that were not terrible. But, like, the, the best thing about the episode was the twist where they get to the bad guy. He's been defeated already. And then yeah. it turns out that, like, the supervillain beyond him was, in fact, drunk Rick from yeah. the last from the night before. <laughs> like, that, <laughs> that was is a, good, a idea. good idea. And I was like, okay, this makes perfect sense as a villain that they will have to confront. I like this. Of course, they have to slip in the, like, obligatory scene like, oh, by the way, he forgot his portal gun. That's why he can't use yeah. it. Like, they have to explain which felt a little forced to me, but you know what else can they do, or else we'll just use that. So I mean, the idea you know, of having to of having Rick fight a version of his himself drunk for the night before is a good idea, you know. But the only I, thing was this, like it wasn't even a fight; like yeah. there was no difficulty solving any of these issues. And uh, right. it's just so, that the the people know. are completely incompetent and get themselves killed. I really think, like, if they had actually played out the Saw angle that's referenced, and, like, it actually was a horror thing, and the horror puppeteer was Rick from, like, a drunk yeah. Rick from the night before, like, now that's that's actually pretty damn good. And, like, the, it really would be an interesting thing that, like, he is doing all these, and they, they, they frame the deaths in a way that's not funny, but actually, like, horrific, and everyone's, like, sad and crying and very upset. And Rick's just like, I don't, sorry, dude, like, I was fucking drunk, what can I do? I, I feel like there was more potential there than the, the angle they took here. But, yeah, yeah, just kind of fell flat the way we were doing it. I also, I feel weird anytime Rick and Morty tries to do witty dialogue. Which, oh, yeah. this episode yeah. is full of quips and one-liners and references to the fact that they're making quips and one-liners. And, like, mm-hmm. it's okay for Rick to do that sometimes, but, like... When they make him just, like, the sarcastic asshole character, I'm like, that's not really how I see Rick. I see him more as, like, an unhinged, drunken madman, you know? Yeah. Like, you yeah. watch the early episodes, particularly the pilot, and, like, he's mm-hmm. he's <laughs> practically not saying words half the time, you know? Yeah. He's a babbling psycho who occasionally, like, busts out some really intellectual stuff. And, like, I think we've seen him closer to that for, like, Pickle Rick, He's, you know, even though he's doing, like, this this sarcasm thing at some points, like, he's mm-hmm. also just going totally out of control ape yeah, shit as a pickle insane, man. Yeah, fucking insane, and it was yeah. great. Uh, that's the good stuff. Not, yeah. like, not like this, like, super forced, like, Jew joke with, like, oh, they just go on about, yeah. I'm totally not anti-Semitic. I, I, I swear, it's I, I'm totally non-taking a side at this point. Yeah. And everyone has to react to that. It, uh, like, uh, I get it. Like, you're you're making a joke about even referencing it. Gee, yeah. just not did not get a laugh and it just kept going on and on my my yeah, favorite not good like, writing. To, what i love about the rick and morty humor is just like yelling pickle rick blah, blah, you know blah, 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 <laughs> yeah. oh it's poopy butthole blah, 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 blah. The shit. you know having characters mm-hmm. sit around going like oh <laughs> maybe you should get your nickname back from the blah blah me <laughs> and then you know I was, ah, no <laughs> Stop. This is faggy. I don't want this. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I kind of, like, I sort of enjoyed the dynamic. Uh, like, w- w- I thought the quips worked in the way that, like, it was a way, f- it, like, this is what makes it good. Like, just doing quips is, anno- is boring and gay. But when, like, there's a-, a character who's, like, role is to, like, be the guy who's like, whoa, nice one, dude. Like, at, yeah. at least I was like, oh, that's kind of funny that, like, this is the dynamic happening here. That's, like, beyond. That, like, I sort just of didn't is think, the lampooning. I, I didn't think yeah. Rick was really, like, hitting them with these strong zingers, though. 
Like, I didn't well, laugh at true. anything he said. Like, the other the other guy backing him up is a funny idea, but, like, they've done that before mm-hmm. with stronger jokes in this show. Yeah. Like, when, uh, my favorite is in the episode with, uh, where we first get introduced to the Council of Ricks, Rick's being yeah. held captive by the evil Rick, and he keeps making all these quips, and, like, the, this, this, like, uh, what was it? Was it one of the Mortys who, or it was something that was like giggling at the jokes and Rick's yeah, like, this was... guy gets it. And he's like, that thing just makes that noise every 15 seconds. And he's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Way funnier version of the same joke. Yeah. I felt yeah, like Noop, I don't know. Noop was supposed to be like a meme character, but he'd left no real impression on me. I feel like Noop Noop and the lady who survives at the end are going to like come back or something. I don't know. Noop Noop just know. struck me as like a shittier version of Mr. Poopy Butthole. You know? Well, he looked exactly like him, which yeah. can't be a coincidence. Uh, that's There's got to be something going on there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just really disappointed. Watched it twice. Like I kind of liked it better the second time because I didn't have the sense of anticipation that wasn't delivered upon. I just kind yeah. of enjoyed watching it. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I really liked the the tangible details of the like superhero squad in the sense that like there was a ghost train conductor. That's yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> uh, a million ants. I really, really like million ants. He's yeah. fucking awesome. He's uh, but ants. He's I think my favorite ants. line in the whole episode is when he mm-hmm. says, I have, uh, I have only lost, lost 400, 400 ants, yeah. and now my queen has repopulated, so I am back to a million ants. That's <laughs> yeah, the that funniest line in the episode. <laughs> um, yeah. I just feel like, uh, again, because we don't have a B-plot, this got strung out a lot longer than it had to be. There was way more setup than usual of, mm-hmm. like... The whole, you know, Morty kind of forcing Rick to get into the situation. Then we have, like, a lot of scenes of buildup of, like, Rick's an asshole to these guys. They don't like him very much. Rick and Morty in the room talking about it, getting emotional about it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, just it kind of went on and on and on. And then we get on the adventure and we get the saw set up. And I'm like, okay, now we're in the episode. Like, now the plot has kicked in. I get what the gimmick is. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then it doesn't really do anything with that, and then it just kind of goes to a dance party at the end, which uh, and the which dance sucks. party scene. Logic aside, I I like the uh, the the stuff Rick says where he's like, you know, just like hey, half the people I end up getting high with later. You know, there's gear mm-hmm. over there. Like, I like that, but eh. dude, how shitty was that? Like after credits gearhead scene. Like it, it's fine that he's yeah. trying to get laid with it, but then like. It's just, like, so flat that he's like, yeah. oh, uh, there's danger. Uh, I'll go change. Wait, why is he going to change? Let's go see what's up. Oh, right. he left his thing. There he is running away. Oh, he tripped and fell down, and that's supposed to be funny. What yeah, the fuck? No. Like, that's not funny in any way. That's, like, the cheapest, shittiest joke in the world. I expect better. I expect better writing. Yeah. So that was disappointing in a big way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, funniest I'm... thing I thought was kind of, I, I don't know, I just, like, at the beginning, when Morty pulls out his, like, ten punch card stamp thing, that, like... But what's funny about that is that it's, like, a funny way to, like, force that the adventure and move the plot along. Yeah. That amused me. And, like, the fact that that's never been referenced before and comes up, you know, just as, like, an established thing. Like, of course, Morty gets a stamp every adventure. Yeah. And, just, you know, that that was funny. That, that's funny stuff. That's the kind of thing that I want to see happening as much as possible. Like, yeah. actually funny stuff that's sort of world-building in this ridiculous way, which this episode lacked. Yeah, I would say this is probably one of the worst episodes, if not the worst episode of Rick and Morty. It's up there. It's up there. And frankly, it makes me a little concerned about the future. Like, I, I've seen... There are episodes that I think are weaker, but I can remember at least something that jumped out in it, you know? And this one, mm-hmm. there was just nothing that I see myself, like, reflecting on and thinking, oh, yeah, that was really funny. That one joke was really good. I'll just yeah, be like, yeah. oh, that was the episode that was kind of boring and and had a really weirdly obtusely violent scene right in the middle that I just found jarring, you know? I just keep thinking about the scene where, like, that guy, like, instantly panics and flees and dies, and just, like, how tremendously unfunny that whole sequence was. It really is. And, like, nothing caused that. I felt like this was sort of, like, 
the first half of a two-parter that we'll never get the second part to. Like, remember at the beginning, there's, like, those guys that are going to, like, uh, turn the whole world sterile. Yeah. And then, like, there's no reference to that ever. Like, that could have been the setup for a joke paid off later in the episode right. that nothing came of. And, I don't know, it just kind of felt like a lot of that stuff. It's just so far under the standard of this show, you know? Yeah. Under yeah. Uh, Less inventive than usual, less, uh, less interesting, less engaging, less funny, less... Uh, memorable shit mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. tight of pacing i mean we getting this right after pickle rick which is yeah, fucking that's, great that's... you know <laughs> well, that's Dif all some I've... different person all yeah. i've got to say about it i ain't got much else i, was I have nothing else to say about this episode only that uh i really hope this doesn't i don't know like two of the four episodes have had an air of less impressiveness to them this season. Yeah. Of course, the other two were like some of the best ever. So like yeah. maybe there's nothing to worry about. I mean, I would I just hope they step it up. I would put like episode two of this season. I would have put on par with the worst episodes of later ones. You know, it still has yeah. moments. Yeah. It has, it has good things going for it, and it had a B plot mm -hmm. that was pretty good. Like even even That's without true. Jerry, we've had B plots through these first three episodes. Now that we're like doing one with no B plot whatsoever, it really felt like it st strained to fit the time. Like they spent way too much time on this adventure for the amount of yucks that could be garnered from it. That's uh, I totally agree. I think that yeah, I think that was a big uh, that makes a lot of sense. That, that, that adding that might have really helped this thing out. Uh, by the way, did you see the preview for the next episode? Because now that I remember what it is, I'm actually kind of hyped for it. I don't. I did Are you not aware see of it. it? It's it's like it's like a Jerry Rick episode. It's like oh. a, those two guys having an adventure together. And I gotta say, I'm kind of excited for it. I think it could be dope. Could be. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. All right. That's <laughs> it, everybody. Let's see you next week. You sound so excited. All right, bye, guys. See you later. <laughs> Kill me.